In a previous lecture, I had described the basic MOSFET structure, and there's a few things that I wanted to uh, add to that lecture, which I'm going to cover now. <clears throat> so here's a basic uh, planar structure of a MOSFET, and here's the symbol, gate, the drain, the source, and then, of course, we have the body or substrate, which we tie to the source, which actually makes it the source as opposed to the drain. So um, what I wanted to talk about in this uh, second lecture here is just some of the other parasitic elements that uh, show up in the structure inadvertently, in addition to the diode that I had mentioned last time. So if you recall, uh, last time we have a between, let me, uh, let's see if I can draw, the, well, I'll just draw it like I did last time. There's a diode that points basically between the bulk and the drain. And since the bulk is, or substrate is tied to the source, you have a diode that is essentially attached between source and drain. And it points in the upward direction. So the MOSFET is a, the MOSFET is a unipolar unipolar device okay because of this diode being here all right if you try to put a voltage uh, a negative voltage across VDS the diode will turn on and there are actually some circuits that make use of that di but diode it's called the body diode D B or body diode So sometimes you can make use of it, but other times it's a nuisance, but it's there. We can't do anything about it. So some other parasitics that are present uh, involve energy storage in the electric field. So notice that, uh, or recall that, in order to produce a, induce a channel, remember the channel goes between um, the source and the drain. In order to induce that, you have to apply a voltage at the gate relative to the source or relative to the substrate. And... Uh, basically the gate uh, the, the gate along with that channel produce uh, the surface of that channel produce a capacitance okay so there's a capacitance I'll redraw this here's a gate and there's this oxide layer and so in between here so you remember you put like a bunch of Put a positive charge here, right, and you'll draw negative charges up along this edge in the P substrate. And this com constitutes essentially a capacitance, which we'll call it C, oops, CGS. Okay, recall this substrate is being tied over to the, to the source, right? So the substrate is at the same potential as the source. So this capacitance shows up between gate to source. So we add that here. That's inside the device, but when we're analyzing a circuit and we need to consider this capacitance, we'll add it uh, physically outside the transistor. Now, uh, and if you simulate, if you actually use a MOSFET uh, model within a SPICE simulator, a lot of times they have built in the capacitance. You don't actually have to place a physical capacitor in your circuit there. Uh, it's just one of the parameters, just like you might specify the threshold voltage or some other parameter for the MOSFET. Uh, okay, there's also a capacitance that shows up between uh, the drain and the source. So when, when the transistor is off, Okay, or let's say when it's in, I shouldn't say off, but when it's in saturation region and there is a VGS or VDS across, you know, between the drain and source, so the source is grounded here, okay, uh, and we have some gate voltage, of course. Uh, there is a what's called a depletion region, which I'll draw going around here. 
basically as you apply a positive voltage this right here will be grounded right this is going to be tied to this is source potential which is grounded so essentially VDS let's say that it's equal to uh, 50 volts or 10 volts whatever it is right you're going to have 50 volts between this well right here and the the substrate so within this margin I zoom this out okay you're gonna have 50 volts between here and here you'd have VDS 50 volts across there and again because you have a strong potential difference and therefore a strong electric field and there is a depleted region meaning that in that region the um, uh, any charge carriers have been swept out of there you'll actually end up getting a capacitance so you'll get a capacitance from the uh, drain to source and that'll we'll call that C D S okay so we can actually put that out here since I'm it's crowded in by the transistor but it's basically between the drain and source call it CDS. All right, and then finally, a much smaller capacitance, but one that plays a very important role, is that um, there is also a large voltage between the, uh, the drain and the gate, right? The gate is at a low voltage relative to, say, a, a drain that might be at 10 volts or 50 volts. The gate may only get up to, you know, 5 volts or so relative to source. So there is a voltage between the drain and the source, drain and the gate, I'm sorry, and it's in this region here. So there'll be a, a drain to gate capacitance, okay, and that'll be really in this, um, so here's the well, I mean I can draw it here, the gate comes over, so it'll actually be kind of in this region right here. Okay, right in that region. So it's a very small capacitance, but there's actually a significant voltage across it. And significant. And in addition, when this capacitance or this capacitance plays an important role when you're switching the transistor from being off to being on. So if you turn on the transistor quickly, uh, so the gate voltage goes up, but then as the the transistor comes on the gate the drain voltage drops very quickly and during that time you have a, a very significant uh, DVDT across uh, the drain to gate and that actually can produce a result in some current flow between the gate and drain in such a way that it actually hinders uh, your ability to turn on the transistor it doesn't stop it but it slows it down and you have to deal with that so that's a bit beyond what we want to deal with in this class, but I just thought since I'm talking about parasitics, let's just go ahead and put all of them up there. Okay, so now you see that there are capacitors between every two terminals here in our MOSFET. Uh, CDS is much, much smaller than like CGS or CDS. Uh, okay, but it plays a very important role in switching applications. So I think I'll stop here. That was just a little short um, follow-on uh, lecture or pincast just to talk about uh, where capacitance comes from. Actually, let me, I can say a little bit more, uh, kind of to, to prime things for talking about circuits that have capacitances in them. So if I have a circuit, an inverter, so we've seen the logic converter many times, and pull this up to say 5 volts I have a resistor R1 and let's say that I'm going to drive this gate through some resistance I'll call it R2 I guess okay now if I put out a square wave um, say 0 to 5 volts um, feeding the gate then uh, but it's if it's through this resistor then the voltage that I'll see be actually at the gate if there is capacitance I'm going to draw in now my capacitance CGS right? the voltage that I see here VGS is going to be uh, let me draw it out here I'll have 
Vn like this, 0 to 5 volts. And then uh, for Vg, I will have, oops, sorry. I'll actually have something that'll look like this. Now maybe I've exaggerated it. Okay, but the idea is that it all depends on the values of the capacitance and the resistors. But, but the, the point is that what was a square wave ends up being um, uh, something that still looks somewhat like a square wave, but has rounded edges to it. It's basically exponential transitions. Okay, so this is Vn. This would be Vgs. And as a result, what I would have for at the output, say, VO here, VDS, I would end up with um, something that might look like... Let me draw the dotted lines here first. I might see a, a voltage that uh, is going to stay... So whenever VGS is high, the transistor is on, and so the output is low. But now when the VGS is going low, it has to go below a threshold voltage before it'll actually turn the transistor off. So I get this delay. Similarly, when you go back to turn VGS on, there's a delay um, if the VGS voltage is rising exponentially as opposed to just a, a nice square wave. So you end up getting something that would look like this. Okay. So if you notice, between here and here, there is a time delay. Okay, between the square wave or pulse signal Vn and the output of my inverter, I actually have a delay, which is usually something I don't want. So you think about uh, microprocessors always trying to clock at a higher frequency so we have faster computers. Well, they have to contend with things like this. The capacitance actually becomes a real nuisance because uh, in order to raise the voltage on that gate, you have to store charge. And if you're going to store charge, you have to deliver the charge. And if you're going to deliver the charge, then you have to have a very um, you know, high current source of electrons, and that means that uh, you either need to have you know, a real low resistance uh, driving circuit, in other words, like no resistance R2, or in reality, because you do have resistance, the rate at which the gate source voltage is going to be able to rise and fall is going to be slowed down. And if you get some time delay, then that, and think about if that, if you're going through a bunch of stages of logic gates, the further down that chain you go, the more accumulated delays you have. And so uh, this is a significant component of, uh, of what limits the speed of processors. Now there's some other things that limit it as well. Uh, which I might uh, talk about here in, a, in another lecture when we talk about maybe power dissipation in a logic inverter such as you see uh, here. So I'll stop here and then in the next lecture I will um, look at how we would go about analyzing a basic RC circuit because after all what we have here is a voltage source driving an RC uh, uh, you know, single loop RC circuit, and we haven't dealt with that at this point yet. We've dealt with uh, all resistor circuits, so we need to to work through the uh, the circuit analysis and the the uh, the equations that come about and the solutions to those equations, and then we can apply it back to uh, this logic converter if we want to.